Hello? Hey, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. It's been a long time. Yeah, man, it's been a while, bro. Yeah, what was it, Prague Power, I think, the last time we had a real conversation? Oh, my God. I I, I honestly can't remember, man. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a while, dude. Oh, totally. But, you know, with that said, you know, it's like it's awesome to be able to talk to you again, you know, uh, being able to promote some amazing work that you've done here with a monolith. And I just love that this uh, band has come together the way that it has, you know, over the last few years, obviously a lot of ups and downs and everything. But the fact that this album is coming out next month, uh, DIY style through a monolith uh, record. I mean, that's just it's so cool to be able to see that this has come together the way that it has. Yeah, it's been uh, quite the process, man. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. We really took our time with it. We wanted to make sure that we did everything the way that we envisioned it. So we didn't cut any corners. We took our time time with everything from songwriting to the recording to the packaging to the artwork. Absolutely everything was very thought out, and we didn't stop until we got it to where we wanted it you know so the the vision was very strong and uh we accomplished everything the way that we wanted to do it and that's why it did take some time to uh, get it to the point where it is now but uh you know come march 27th that album will finally be out and everyone in the band is very excited about it everyone supporting us around the world is excited about it we're lining up tours, like we're doing it all, man. The dream is coming true. So uh, fingers crossed that we can uh, kick some ass around the world and, and make this happen in a big way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I think once people hear this, uh, they're, they're going to show that you guys are in this for the long haul. And I mean, I, I just got the record yesterday, but I've been spinning it ever since. And I just love everything that's going on here. I mean, I have I always love it when you're able to show off all of your uh, proggy elements and you're able to play this insane stuff and odd time signatures. But here, just being able to see you groove, being able to show off some killer fills and uh, occasional blasts as well. It was cool to hear that too. But just just being able to like do some more straight ahead music but being aggressive and just being able to play with full force this way it's just it's so cool yeah you know what i've always had that in me as a drummer and as a songwriter it's like i've always focused on hooks and having a pulsating groove no matter the speed uh no matter how intense or how soft the song may be it, it doesn't matter i just always want to have that groove involved. And then the big thing for me is adding drum fills or really cool parts or whatever to it when it's needed. You know, the thing about prog music, which I love, you know, I grew up listening to Rush. Neil Peart was my biggest influence ever. But like, uh, you know, like growing up with, with prog music, there's so much going on. And that's why it's called progressive music, you know. But um, I, I definitely had my influences and stuff from that. But the thing I loved about Rush is they still always groove with the prog music. You know, you can go into other genres of, of prog and, you know, it's hard to groove to it. And I never got into it. So I always grew up with that strong presence of, like, play for the song. Make the song awesome. And then make it a little more progressive or add some technicality to it. And that's exactly what we did with the monolith is we focused on the song. I, I focused on my drum part to make sure that they complemented the song first. And then once the song was written, everything was done, uh, my drumming evolved, you know, up until the studio recording. And I added in some cool fills. I added in some last beats. I, I, I did these different things to complement it even further, right? So that was our focus with this. Another thing, too, is obviously I'm, I'm most known for uh, playing with Devin Towns in the Devin Townsend band, Devin Townsend Project, and I did a lot of crazy drumming, you know, on those records. Um, so, you know, I think there may be the possibility that a lot of people are expecting to do more of that type of drumming. Well, I'm, I'm going a, a different route with this album. You know, this is focused on the song. You know, not saying that Devin wasn't, because Devin is incredible. Everything he did was incredible. But it's a different genre of music and a different approach. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. 
there's still some great chops on there for people to listen to. But at the same time, the grooves and the hooks and the beats that I came up with, I'm, I'm very proud of it and uh, of everything that we did. And I'm uh, very excited for people to hear it. Yeah, and that's why I even uh, messaged you to just uh, tell you how much I love the album and the groove that's behind it, too, because every single song has amazing groove, and amazing choruses, and just so many hooks left and right. I mean, every single song feels like it could have been a single. I mean, it feels like an album of singles that fit together so very well. That's It's funny you say that, Josh, because I've heard that from a ton of people who are interviewing me. It's coming up so often that they're like, man, it's like you guys released an album single here. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the big compliment we could get for what we were uh, trying to achieve with it, right? So um, that's that's really cool. It's, a, it's an awesome compliment. Thank you very much for that. But the fact that I'm hearing this over and over from uh, a lot of the interviews I've been doing is, is pretty cool, right? And to be honest, that wasn't the intent. The intent, again was just to write what we thought were great songs. You know, it's, it's not like we're aiming for every song to hit radio or something like that. Some of them, there's no chance of that happening. But then there's a lot of songs on the record where, yeah, you know, we're like, wow, you know, half of this album could easily get played on radio. You know, but um, our intention, again, it was to, to write those killer songs, you know, and just make sure the songs were great. But thanks so much. That's a, a huge compliment. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think that goes a long way to say about the musical chemistry that's going on within the band. I mean, you got so many incredible musicians and songwriters that are a part of this band. I mean, I love the fact that you're still working with Beeve. I mean, you got uh, John Howard, who I've been a huge fan of Threat Signal since Under Reprisal, and uh, uh, now you got Kai in there, and now you got Scott in there as well, too. I mean, it's just awesome to see this amazing lineup come together. Yeah, you know what? Everyone in the band is an accomplished musician. They're, they're all songwriters. They're all, all great people. It, it really feels like a band of brothers. You know what I mean? And, and that's very, very important to us. Now, you know, to clarify how this album was written, though, um, it was totally different. So I'll give you a little bit of... I'll, I'll give you the backstory of how it actually happened as far as the songwriting process. Um, it started back in 2015, to be honest. And what had happened was you know, Brian and I, uh, we we're always buddies in DTP. We always hung out days off together. We did stuff, go to hockey games. We just had a lot of similar interests and uh, influences, so we always hung out. And then uh, we decided in 2015, we're like, let's start writing music together, man, because we knew that the Devin Townsend gig would not be forever. We knew that Devin always liked to change things up after a while, right? Um, he did it with Strapping Young Lad. He did it with Devin Townsend Band. Everything he does, he, he ends up changing it up. And eventually, that's exactly about what happened with Devin Townsend Project. And we knew it was coming. So we started writing music. That music that we started writing is what a monolith is today. So up until 2018, when we formed a monolith, we, we had already about, I, I don't know, it was like 12 to 15 songs. And in the end, we had 16 to 18 songs. Um, that we chose from to, to make this record, but the majority of the record was written by Brian and I. And then when the other guys came in, you know, especially when we were recording record and stuff, they added their ideas to like overdubs and stuff like that. But this this first album is primarily written by uh, Beave and I. And then uh, John Howard also uh, came in and uh, added some uh, some songwriting as far as instrumentally. And uh, he also contributed some lyrics. He did the lyrics to uh, Instinct, the record. But even this record, which is uh, surprising for a lot of people to hear, it's like I wrote the lyrics for the entire record. That's a big Neil Peart thing. You know, I've done it in past bands as well. I've always been a lyricist. But I think the shocking thing that a lot of people are, are finding out are all the vocal melodies were written by me on this record. So... I'm, I'm really, really getting to step out and be the songwriter that I always uh, always knew that I, I was. It's just that I, I was never in a situation where I could step out and actually fully uh, utilize all these things that I'd been doing, right? So that's, that's how it came together. You know, uh, the band is going to evolve, you know? So when it comes to a second record, yeah, you know, we're going to get everyone's ideas and riffs in there, you know, and we'll just see where it goes. But we've set a template and that template will stick to it. That'll be our sound. But um, in the future, 
obviously, we're going to take everyone's ideas, which weren't there in the first place, to, to create a model with them and take it being the first part. Oh, and that's just incredible as well. You know, it's like, a, obviously, yeah, I knew a bit about uh, your uh, past songwriting and stuff like that, being such a huge fan of Terror yeah, Syndrome. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the fact yeah. that you're able to show it in a bigger light now with a monolith, I mean, it's just, it's so cool to see that where you actually got to pen the lyrics to this, you got to... Uh, sit with the writing, the arrangements, all of that stuff, uh, all through the end of the whole record. I mean, the fact that you were so involved, like getting this band together and getting the songs the way that you wanted it to go. And now with the second album, when that eventually gets worked on, you know, in the future, I mean, I can't wait to see where the band's going. I mean, I love what's going on here, but I just know that the band's just going to grow bigger and better from here on out. Yeah, that's the plan. You know, we, we want to be, like I said earlier in this interview, we want to be a band of brothers. You know, we want to grow together. Uh, we want to be open-minded. We want to listen to each other's ideas. And, and the most important thing is put together and to present the best product possible. And we feel, you know, very grateful for how everything came together. We're super excited about how the album sounds, uh, how we're presenting everything. The artwork's incredible. Uh, we got Dane Howlett, a, a very, very awesome and well-known artist out of Australia. He just knocked you know, the logo, from everything from the logo to the symbol to all the album artwork, everything, he just knocked it out of the park. So uh, all this stuff is going to grow, you know what I mean? And uh, we definitely want it to be that band vibe. And, uh, you know, to, to, to make a monolith happen, it was a lot of Beav and I uh, that had, well, we had the original vision. And then once we wanted to go through with it, once the Devin Townsend project broke up in 2018, uh, we just looked for the personnel who would love our music to form a band and release it, you know? So that's, that's how it came, and uh, it's exciting to see how it evolved. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, another thing that goes along with that as well, I mean, with, with the whole package, uh, is in the production side, the the production, the, mis uh, the mixing, and the mastering. I love the fact that every single instrument is uh, showing up on here. It's so clear, and you can just hear everything that's going on there. I mean, the fact that if I'm listening for the guitar, I can hear the guitar. If I'm listening for the bass, the bass is there. I mean, I love the fact that this production on there is just so stellar in that way. Yeah, man, we tip the hat to Jason Van Puderoin. And yes, that's my brother. There aren't very many Van Puderoins. <laughs> um, uh, Jason knocked it out of the park. And here's the thing that, that makes, there's many things actually that made this album the way it is. First of all, Jason is a very well sought after producer, engineer, and mixer in LA. Uh, he's worked with bands like Nickelback. Uh, he worked with Chris Cornell. He's, he's doing the brand new Simple Plan record right now. Like he works with A-list bands and he knows his stuff. You know what I mean? So he's incredible at what he does. But the thing that really made this album different was we approached it with a very minimalistic approach. We wanted to go very organic. So we approached Jason, we said, we really want to try and develop our own sound, but we want to avoid the drum sample. We want to avoid DI guitar sound. We want to mic everything. Then we even recorded the drums to two inch tape, okay, in the studio, and then ran it into Pro Tools. You know what I mean? So it's like, we wanted to go completely organic. All of John Howard's vocals, his clean vocals and stuff, none of it was auto tuned. It's all absolutely John. Howard, 100%. And he killed it. He sounds incredible on the record. But that's what we did, is is we went completely organic. We wanted to get this raw, energetic sound. But because Jason's so talented, he made that organic sound huge. Like, the album sounds massive. It just sounds different, because everything is 100% organic. Now, with that being said, I have absolutely nothing against samples or DIs. You never know. Our, our next record could be filled with them. But for this record, we just wanted to do something different because we're coming out of the gate, brand new band, and we wanted to stick out in a different way, whether it was the songwriting or whether it was the album production or the artwork. It didn't matter. We just wanted to do something different that made it us and gave us our own identity. And Jason Van Pruderoyen was a huge part of that, man. Just his producing, uh, all the ideas he gave us, the sounds he came up with. Like you said, the clarity in the mix is incredible. Like, it's my favorite drum sound ever. You know, you hear the crack of my artist, Ron Sonar snare. It's just like, oh my God, that's, it sounds like a sonar drum. You know what I mean? It's not covered up with a sample, and, and I wanted that. So we're all just over the top about uh, the production of the album, how it sounds, the mix, mastering, everything. We're, we're very, very happy with it. 
Yeah, and it's, you know, it's funny you say that, too, because years upon years ago, being able to hear you play amongst uh, other Pearl artists, like, uh, that's the reason I switched over to Pearl. But in this record with Monolith, you're about to switch me over to Sonar with how amazing that snare <laughs> sounds, the toms, like, all, everything just sounds amazing on your kit. And I love the fact that it was actually writ, uh, recorded the tape and then thrown over to the Pro Tools, because it just does have that nice, rich, warm, organic sound to it and it's it's such a refreshing thing to hear in 2020 yeah and uh first of all i apologize josh because uh you know if you follow me to pearl that's awesome and now switching to sonar isn't uh, exactly a, a cheap feat but uh <laughs> you know what man make that switch i'm telling you you know nothing against pearl they treated me well for 12 years but I'm telling you, I'm playing my dream drum set with Sonar. I got two new uh, Sonar SQ2s made up for me, one in North America, one in Europe. And they're absolutely stunning drums. They do not cut any corners. They give 150% in everything they do. And the quality is it's perfect. From tom to tom to tom, from make to make, they're just on top of everything. You know, the Germans really know how to do it right, man. They, they got they got their stuff down. But, you know, as as far as the uh, the drum sound and everything, and, and yeah, you're right, you nailed it. It's like when you go to two-inch tape, it's warm, it's big. It's just, it's got this unmistakable sound to it. You know, it's the, the, the one thing about samples is you can get great sounds and they can do everything, but the, there is something missing when, when you get a sample versus going to organic to two-inch tape. It's just two different things. It's not like one better than the other. It's just a preference, you know, and we wanted that warm of organic sound and one of the best ways to capture that do it through two inch tape you know and you just get this wideness and this warmth to it that's just amazing and then you get a great engineer producer like jason uh you know he can bring out the punch he can emphasize the low end he can do whatever he wants through uh you know all the tools that he's learned over the years but uh again yeah you know that drum sound man my favorite drum sound ever by far my favorite drum sound i've ever recorded just because it, it's my drum it's 100 percent my drum you know and, and that's the first time that i've ever had that in, in my entire career so i'm very very excited uh for people to hear this oh yeah and you know it's it's amazing because you know going between the, the last two releases that you had you know like uh i love the sound that was on transcendence and i love the fact that the the drum stood out so much as it did, especially w working with Nolly, but, you know, being able to do almost the exact opposite here and being able to just focus on your drums, making sure that they're tuned the right way, using the right mics, getting everything lined up the way that it should, and of course, uh, getting those amazing cymbals that you have to match up the drums as well. I mean, just, yeah, just like you said, it's a preference, and, uh, you know, going forward, there might be uh, samples later, there might be some 808 drops that you don't ex expect on future releases or something like that, but, you know, with this release it needed that great rich warm sound with recording the tape and i'm so glad that you went that direction yeah and, and you know what it's like my favorite drum sound i ever had with Devin Townsend was trans by far uh that was the best drum sound i ever got with them that was the last recording i did with the pearl drum set too and um you know like uh nolly is incredible he knocked it out of the park. Now that album is loaded with samples on the drum, you know, and they did they did mix in a natural sound along with it, but definitely samples on it. And um, he killed it, you know, and there's a great example of how you can get samples to sound friggin' awesome. You know, Nolly knocked it out of the park, and again, that was my favorite album as far as uh, drum sound goes with Devin Townsend, you know, but favorite drum sound overall ever that I've gotten, and this definitely isn't a knock to uh, Nolly because he killed it. It's just a preference is on this uh, monolith track, by far. You know, I just... Like you said, you listen to it, the symbols are so clear. The drums have this beautiful natural punch to it. There's the dynamic to it. It sounds like a sonar drum kit, and that's what I love, you know? And the cool thing about it, too, is uh, it's the first thing I recorded with my SQ2 kit, you know, this debut of Monolith album. So it's pretty special for me. I'm, I'm literally playing my dream drum that right now with SQ2. And, uh, you know, to have that show up on your first debut album of, of the band that, you know, is a band, is something you formed and created, is pretty special for me. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, the fact that you do get to play this amazing dream kit with uh, your new endorsements. I mean, obviously having them for a few years, but the, you know, the first time you're recording with them, uh, first time with this band, too. I mean, there's so many firsts that's going on here. And, you know, it's just it's great to see this brand new chapter of your life musically going on here. I mean, uh, with that amazing kit that you have, uh, amazing group of guys that you're working with and upcoming shows, too. I mean, I love the fact that you're getting the album out there and then not too long after you're heading over to Europe. Yeah, that was uh, very exciting for us because <laughs> the Monolith is a brand new band. You know, people are throwing around the term, and I'm seeing it showing up a lot in uh, press as a super group, and I cannot stand that term. You know, like, I get it. We're all from past bands that are, are known bands, you know, like, and, it, and it's cool and whatnot, but um, that definitely helped in having us being able to tour and do a headline tour of Europe and UK as our first tour ever. You know, it's like, it's pretty crazy when you think about it. We're still like, holy crap, we're headlining our first tour ever in, the, in Europe and the UK. That's great, you know? But, you know, we were looking for direct support or opening slots with other big bands. You know, like that was our intention to, to plan just anything so we can get out there and play in front of people and, you know, uh, tour. But uh, as soon as we started doing that, promoters, you know, heard that we were wanting to go over there and tour, and they started coming back to our booking agent saying, we'll book them as a headline. You know, it's like, so it wasn't our idea to headline. It, it was the promoters coming back saying, we'll book them as a headline. You know, our booking agent was like, do you guys want to do this headline tour? And we're just like, whoa, you think we should headline like our first tour ever? I mean, we're not sure about that. And then he said the best thing ever. He just said, look, you have to start somewhere. He goes, if these promoters are, are wanting you to headline, sure, the venues are going to be a lot smaller than what you did with Devin, but you have to start somewhere, and you're going out playing all your music, you're doing a headline, and that you can give uh, all the people who are supporting you, uh, you know, the best show possible and give them the most music possible on your first tour in a few days. So we talked about it as a band. We said, let's do it. You know, let's, let's go for it, you know? Guns blazing, man. And uh, just get out there and play. We have to start somewhere. We might as well do it by playing our entire first record and uh, a couple other surprises in the set. Uh, so that's what we did. So March 27th, the album drops, but that's also our first date in the UK. Uh, we're playing Sheffield that day, so it's kind of like a CD release party in a sense. And uh, the tour goes through till April 27th. So it's a good five weeks that we're going to be out there. And, uh, you know, we're playing, I think, 27 shows, 28 shows. So we're, we're doing a lot, you know, to, to kick off this first tour. And then after that, we're looking at North America. Right now, we're looking into North America. It could be a USA Canada combo tour. It could be a headlining tour of Canada uh, or, or opening for someone in Canada because it's obviously easy for us to tour in Canada because from you know, but the USA we got to get visas and stuff. So we're just looking at all the different options that we have. But that will definitely be the next tour that we hit up is touring North America. Oh, that that is just fantastic to hear. You know, uh, first going with the UK and Europe. I mean, the fact that uh, you are playing the day of release. I mean, you are playing the album in its entirety, and some uh, I imagine really cool surprises to go along with that as well too. And you know, just being able to do that first headlining tour and then uh, coming back. Uh, over here to this continent and being able to do some amazing touring uh, after that sometime in the future. And of course, anytime that you come near Minnesota, I'm going to be there to support you. Oh, of course, brother. It's like every time we're, we're in Minnesota, I see you and, you know, we'll, we'll grab a coffee. It's like knowing you for years, man. You've been very supportive. You you helped get my name out there, you know, when Devin Townsend Project was started. Yeah, you're, you're a brother, you know, and, and I love everything you do, the drummer guy and, and your podcast and just people you interview your interviews are very in-depth they're very killer so you know every time we tour through there you know we're we're going to be hanging brother oh absolutely and of course uh, uh some people may not be aware of this uh, you were my very first interview that i've ever done and actually as of this interview you are my 665th interview that i've done since i started this oh one away from the stick 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 <laughs> <laughs> um no that's hey man it's like I said, I was your first interview ever, and uh, I'm very grateful for the support that you've given me over over the years. But I just can't say that, you know. And uh, we help each other, you know. Like, look at how far you've come. Look at all that the heavy hitters you've interviewed, you know. So it, it's a really cool thing to be able to help each other, right? And I think that's what this industry needs a little more of. To be honest, in my opinion, 
Um, you know, but having the support group through all the people that you meet in the industry and just being able to reach out and help each other whenever you can, it's a big thing. So uh, for me to come back and do yet another interview with you, it's, uh, it's an awesome thing for me. And uh, a monolith appreciate, uh, appreciates it very greatly as well. Oh, and that's a uh, thanks and appreciation absolutely goes your way as well, too. I mean, you know, uh, be it music related, being uh, us talking in privates or just uh, hanging out at shows or something like that, you know, just like a life experiences, music experiences, just being able to talk. I mean, it's just been great to know you all this time and uh, seeing the rise that you've had as well, too. I mean, especially when the Devin Townsend Project was uh, really starting to rise. And now with uh, this new rising amount uh mega monolith that's going to be coming out with a monolith you know i mean i love the fact that uh you guys are doing this so diy i mean Rob, releasing it through yourselves and being able to make the album the way that you wanted to just like you said in the beginning i mean you know waiting for the right time making sure you can do it the right way and you know just everything that you guys are doing now i i can't support it enough because it's great music it's great a uh, group of guys that I know and love and appreciate uh, musically and life in general. And again, you know, just like, I thank you again for taking this time to be able to do this. And, you know, thank you for helping jumpstart my career, being able to help you out as well. And of course, just being able to catch up again. This is awesome. Yeah, man, I, I love it. And, uh, you know, you nailed it on the head. We're, we're doing everything the way that we would like to do it. You know, when we first, started putting together demos and stuff, we did shop the labels. We did have labeling, you know, but in the end, we were just like, you, you look at the deals, the potential deals that you would get, or, or just the way the state of the industry is now. Um, we had an opportunity to do this independently, do it on our own. And when we compared it to what the industry would offer us, you know, what the potential offers would be, this just made the most sense. You know, it's, it's like we're in complete control of our career. Uh, we decide on what music hits the album with our producer. You know, we decide on how we're going to record it. We decide on the budget. We decide where we're going to tour her. You know, like, if, if everything takes off, it, it was because of our decision. And the flip side is, if, if it fails, it's also because of those decisions. But to be able to make that decision was huge for us. You know, so we decided we had an opportunity to be able to do it independently, which is no easy feat. I'm going to tell you that right now, man. Uh, there is so much hard work involved in doing it independently and getting the teams, hiring the teams, getting your PR, your project manager, everything. Just getting it together, it's a lot of work. But it was so worth it to be able to get to this point and to be able to basically drive our career the way that we envisioned. You know, and, uh, you know, now it's just a matter of getting that album out and seeing what happens. You know, obviously, we have a really good feeling that we can make a good dent in the music industry and our genre of music. But you never know until you get out there. We're a brand new band. We're going to have to build. You know, we know that. But uh, we're willing then to put in the hard work. It doesn't matter if we're playing to 500 people or if we're playing to 100 or even 50 people. We are going to play like we're playing in front of 50,000 people. You know, it's like just to be able to have this opportunity, uh, we're all extremely grateful for it. You know, the fact I was joking the other day in another interview, uh, you know, someone was saying, oh, you're coming back to Heathrow Airport for the hundredth time, you know, because we passed through there so many times, uh, you know, in London, England, when we were touring with Devin Townsend Project. And I said, yeah, but you want to know what the difference is at the end of touring with Devin Townsend Project, we'd go back to Heathrow and be like, oh, Heathrow again, you know, huge lineups and all that. But what I said, this one reporter, I said, when I land in Heathrow because of a monolith, I am going to kiss the ground of that place, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm here because of a monolith. You know what I mean? And even though the venues are going to be two, 300 cap versus two or 3,000 cap, like, we did with Devin, it doesn't matter, man. We're there because of a monolith, you know? And, uh, man, just, just that in itself is amazing. The fact that we took this from absolutely nothing, now two years later we're releasing a full album and we're able to tour it, you know, in the UK and Europe and headlining. Like, man, this is a dream come true, you know? And with that being said, i got to say this. Uh, I 
personally, and I know Brian is the same, I'm very, very, very grateful for all that time uh, that I did with the Devin Townsend Project, Devin Townsend Band, just Devin Townsend. You know, Devin Townsend can choose any drummer he wants on the face of this planet uh, to play with him. You know, tons of guys would kill to play with Devin. And just the fact that, you know, he had me drum for him for over 15 years uh, is a huge honor. Very grateful. You know, I wish him the absolute best moving forward. You know, Empath kicked ass for him. Uh, he's doing great. Uh, but I'm very grateful for all those years uh, that I got to play with him and especially build my career as a drummer, you know, as, as someone in the music industry. It, it did a lot of great things for him, right? So uh, I can't say enough good things about uh, my experience with that. Times have, have moved on, and to be honest, I'm, I'm glad they did because this is something that I always wanted to do. Uh, what we're doing with the monolith was always a dream, and I was never sure if I'd be able to do that. You know, because even when Devin Townsend Project broke up, uh, I had offers from other big bands to, to join. And uh, I, I stuck it through with the monolith. I wanted to do this. This is this has been a dream of mine for it. You know, to, to write your own music, to go on tour, to headline Europe in the UK. You know, the, the fact that it's actually gotten to this point is a dream come true. Now we just have bigger dreams to work on to, to really you know, blow this thing up. That's, that's our goal. That's every band's goal, you know, but that's what we want to do next. So one step at a time, we're doing this. Very grateful for all my time with uh, Devin Townsend, but extremely grateful as well to have a monolith be able to go out and this. Yeah, and I'm just so happy to see that too, because, you know, it's like, I, of course, I'm going back uh, to Terror, Terror Syndrome, album because it's like i know how much fun that you had recording that album and uh, just being able to show that different side of your playing and now being able to see that again here with a monolith like if you know i wasn't entirely sure what was going to happen when it came to uh the end of the devon townsend project but i knew at some point that you were gonna want to have a band that you were able to have control of again where you know you have things going the way that you want to go and finding the right group of musicians that have the same ideas that you want to be able to put forward and i also could have imagined you being able to play with these amazing bands that you would have been able to be their next drummer and being able to showcase what you can do with other songs but i love the fact that you did stick with a monolith like you wanted to keep this passion going being able to make this band rise and yeah i mean there's every potential that it could fail and you know with it being more diy i mean it would come on the band but i don't see that happening i just see people being able to uh, grab onto this music because there's so much to love about everything about it like when it gets heavy it gets heavy when it when it gets popular it gets popular when it when it has the hooks those hooks are undeniable and the fact that you wanted to be able to keep that vision and want to make this band rise from your own creation i mean that's that's such a great satisfying feeling and i'm glad you get to experience that once again and being able to make that your full-time band yeah Oh, you, you nailed it. That was very well said, man. And, you know, with Terror Syndrome, it started out as a solo album, you know, and it kind of turned into a band in the end, but we just didn't have the money behind us. It was in an independent release. You know, we only released it digitally. It never had any physical sales. So at the time, I just didn't have the money to do, do it like we're doing the monolith, which has money behind it, right? So... I'm very proud of the Terror Syndrome record. You know, Devin Townsend actually mixed it, did a great job. Uh, you know, and it, it was a great record, and that's where I was at at that time. And you, you can hear, you know, similarities in a monolith in Terror Syndrome because obviously I wrote the music in Terror Syndrome. But, uh, you know, with the monolith, it, it, it's just an evolution of what Terror Syndrome was, you know. And it, it crossed my mind when Devin Townsend Project broke up. It's like, do I do Terror Syndrome now? Like, for real, do I try and do that? Or do I just do something fresh with what Brian and I were creating? With Brian and I, at one point, were even looking at Terror Syndrome songs to add to a model. You know what I mean? But then we said, you know what? No, let's, let's keep this completely separate from that. This has to be its own end, right? So we, we did that. And uh, again, you know, Terror Syndrome was, was something that was amazing. But moving forward, a monolith was that. You know, it was a vision that Brian and I had together. And uh, now that we got the other guys involved, especially John Howard, too, I'm like, 
Ty and Scott are incredible musicians as well, but John's voice, uh, I remember hearing it for the first time, you know, with our music, and I was just floored. I was <laughs> like, this guy's incredible. So to have him on board and, you know, it, it's just a, it's a dream band for me, man. It is. And I think the biggest thing when Devin Townsend Project broke up is, sure, there were a couple bands that reached out to me, and I just didn't want to be a hired gun again, man. And, you know, with, with Devin, yeah, it was a band, but it wasn't a band because we were a hired gun. And, you know, the proof was in the pudding when, when he disbanded it because he just wanted to go and work with other musicians, which I totally respect. And we knew it was coming. We just didn't know when he was going to pull apart. You know, so I had enough of that. I had 15 years of being a hired gun, you know. So uh, I didn't want to continue that. I had to go for the dream. And you know what? Where would I be right now if I did take one of those gigs, if I landed one of those gigs, tried out and got it? Um, financially, I'd be off, be a lot better off than I am right now. <laughs> you know, because this is independent, man. So it's not like I'm, uh, you know, racking up the cash right now. We haven't even really brought cash in. We bring, start bringing cash in with the album release. And, you know, when you go out on, on tour, you know, these first couple of tours, a bunch of tours, maybe who knows for how long you're just hoping to break deep, you know? So it's, it's a big risk in that sense, but if it goes, the payoff is going to be that much greater, you know? So, but more importantly, if it goes, you're going to be much happier. And that's what the point is. This point isn't about money. This point is about doing what you love and loving what you do. And that's what a monolith is to me. And that's what a monolith is to Brian, John, you know, so to be able to do this is, is a dream for us. And the fact that we actually pulled it off and we're, we're able to get out there and, and release the novel, you know, tour around the world is going to be a huge dream come true for us. So, um, you know, that, that kind of goes into detail about the whole transition from uh, Devin Townsend Project to this. You know, there were options for all of us, but in the end, this is what we ended up doing and we're extremely excited about it. Yeah, and that is exactly why you have all of my love and gratitude and appreciation for going that way, because I know you are that kind of guy that likes to be able to uh, do what you want to do. And, you know, it's like, uh, even if it's just like a, a drum fill or a drum beat that you come up with in Devin Townsend Project, or being able to write your own songs and create your own band, I know you like having that a part of you. And, you know, just uh, being able to go this way rather than being a hired gun. I mean, sure, there is the financial benefits that go along with it but you know the fact that uh, you want this band to be able to rise the way that it is and you're still doing amazing work being able to do drum lessons uh you know uh, the, the motivation and health and fitness that you do on social media as well is just so aspiring that you do that as well and ju you just show all the different sides of what life can be both musically and in life and you're really going with that motivation as well too with uh, choosing your own path doing what's going to make you happy and you know just being able to go that way in life yeah and that's that's what it is again the, the phrase do what you love and love what you do if you do those if, if you keep that phrase in mind and you do those little things every single day just a bunch of little things that you love it truly adds up to one big thing called happy you know so like people need to focus on that more man and especially if you're a musician you know it's like I, I'm loving what I'm doing in a model. The music we wrote, I love every single song that's on that record. You know, we played Hollow to Death as that being our first single back in January of 2019. But you know what? I'm still very proud of that song. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of me, right? But to be able to do what you love and love what you do through your music is it's so gratifying, man. It, it's so awesome. And, you know, on the flip side, again, with everything that I did with Devin Townsend, even though that wasn't my music, I, I did get to write, contribute some writing to, to the band over the years. But, uh, you know, as a hired gun, I still love every single moment because, you know, all those massive shows we played. I, I got to play Royal Albert Hall, Brixton Academy, Wacken, uh, Open Air Festival, Download, Summer Breeze. Like, I played in Japan in Saitama Arena. You know, like, I did incredible things. Like, 90% of my musical dreams came true because of Devin Townsend. So, I'm very grateful for that. This is just a new chapter and something that's going to evolve, hopefully, from what I did with uh, Devin Townsend, right? But, 
the key thing, guys, do what you love and love what you do. If you put your heart into something and you give it your all, you have the best chance of succeeding. You really do. And that doesn't mean that you will succeed. You know, a monolith could not do anything. There's that possibility. Of course there is. You know, we're brand new. We're independent. But, you know, my gut is we're going to go on. We're going to work our asses off and success. And uh, we all love it. And we all have a passion for it. And that's one of the greatest advantages that any band can have is believing in yourself, working hard, taking that action, and never quitting. you got to persevere. you got to persevere. you got to go for it, right? So, um here we are, man. We're, we're getting ready to release this album it's over a month. We got tours set up. Uh, we have great support from people all over the world, from Australia to Japan to USA, Canada, Europe, UK. We have uh, lots of people asking if we're going to come down to South America. Like, the support is incredible, you know, and, and we're very excited about that. So just a matter of seeing where we can take this, uh, where the sport is, uh, we'll go to tour there, and we just want to build this. Just keep on building it, spreading the word. And again, you know, having me on your show, I, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, it's great because every interview is getting on with out more and more people. So, um, you know, I can't thank you enough, Josh. I, I know we're friends as well, but, uh, you know, for you to, to do this uh, for a monolith and, and for myself, I'm, I'm very grateful, brother. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if I would have just gotten this promo and I never even heard of you before and I would have checked this out, I immediately would have wanted to do an interview to be able to spread the word of this band. I mean, that's how much I think this band and uh, has potential to be able to grow and yeah and you know it's funny that you were mentioning persevere on there as, as well too uh, one last note to talk about the album i love the fact that persevere is the last track on the album too because it does leave you on that very positive message i mean there's so much going through this record i mean there's a lot of angry moments there's a lot of uplifting moments but being able to end on a song like persevere and just you know, just like a, that great last moment that uh, you can have on this album and, you know, just being able to persevere with what you do. And of course, I uh, bring that back into the band, being able to persevere with a monolith. I mean, it's just, I'm glad to see that that passion is in there. I mean, I can just hear it in your voice, how much passion that you have for this band and how excited you are to be able to have everyone be able to check this out March 27th. And when you finally go out on tour uh, over in the UK and Europe and back over here in North America and possibly some South America, you know, everything that could be possible in the future. You just keep that perseverance going and there's no limits of what you can do. That's exactly it. You nailed it on the head. Uh, Persevere, the song on the record, that was thrown around as like a possible single as well. You know, it's, it's got some killer hooks and there's a, an awesome message in it lyrically. But that song ended up as the last song on the album, As Dark. When we had all the songs, right away we're like, persevere and easy last. You know, just, it, it's the perfect way to cap a record like that. We really feel the structure of the way that we uh, put the, the song order in. Um, it takes you in a, on a journey. You know what I mean? There's lots of peaks and valleys in that record. There's, like you said, extremely heavy moments. Uh, and there's lighter moments. And then there's moodier moments. And then at the end of it, there's a strong message. You know, and that's what the album State of Being is about. It, it's not my view. It's the world's view. Everyone goes through states of being. And everyone, for example, the song Become an Enemy, that's about becoming your own worst enemy. You know what I mean? Just the dumb shit that we do, you know, <laughs> to sabotage. Life. Everyone's done it. And that's what that song's about. Persevere is exactly about that. It's about persevering through life. You know, focusing on the things that you want, having that end result, doing what you love. That's what Persevere is. You know, the, the rain, that's a different song, you know, where, you know, I felt very strongly about how society says you got to go to school, then you got to get a nine to five job. And then when you're 65, you can retire. You know, I just call bullshit on that, man. You know, it's like break the rain, get out of that. That's, that's what people perceive it as. That's what people perceive life as. Screw that. Live your life the way you want to do it. Do what you want to do. Don't, don't succumb to the rain, you know what I mean? And uh, it's the heaviest song on the record, man. We, we even got Jens Hitman from Meshuggah to guest on it. You know, it's like, let's make this even heavier, you know? And so Jens came in and just absolutely annihilated, right? So, uh, you know, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's a journey, man. And there's a strong message in that record. And it wasn't by design. It wasn't like we we're going to do a concept record or anything. 
it's just lyrically, when I was writing lyrics for this album, that's where I was at at that time. You know, it, it's kind of emotional for me because, in a sense, I'm coming from this amazing adventure that I had for 15 years with Devin Townsend, and I'm starting fresh. There's a bunch of uncertainty, you know? It's like, it's, it's kind of scary, but at the same time, extremely exciting. So lyrically... I was going through these various state of dates of being, you know what I mean? And it just, that's what came out of me. That, that was the feeling. Even when John wrote the lyrics to Indate, which is the only song on the, the record that I didn't write lyrics to, his vibe, it's a, it, the song is about a battle of oneself, you know what I mean? So it completely fit in with what the rest of the lyrics were for the record. So in the end, when I came up with the title State of Being, I said, hey guys, I'm thinking State of Being, but lyrically it just so happens that all these lyrics kind of contribute to, you know, the, what humans go through, you know, day by day, month by month, year by year, decade by decade, you know, the various states. So uh, it's really come full circle, man. It's a really cool vibe we got going on i think and um we're very proud of the record it's a journey to listen to there's a bunch of different stuff for you to, to hear on that record and uh man i just can't wait for march 27th i just want to get to know everyone I, and i hope a ton of people can hear this. oh totally yeah and you know i i do love that about the rain i mean the fact that you got jens to be able to uh contribute to the song but you know the fact that breathe is one of the you know moodier songs on the album uh, arguably the lightest song on on the record and then it goes into rain which is just absolute chaos uh, right from the beginning i mean it's just i love that because it really does fit in with the state of being as well because we all have these different kinds of personalities and trials and tribulations that happen and you know like uh, the battling of oneself i mean you know very well uh, on my end that uh, i constantly deal with that uh, every day and being able to really listen to these lyrics and you know be at the state of the world or being the state of oneself and the more i dissect what's going on there it's just like it's so relatable everything that can go through but again you know just like going back to the end of perseverance like even though everyone can go through all these different kinds of struggles mentally physically sociologically i mean there's so many different struggles that are out there but if you persevere you can work on yourself and you can get better that's exactly it and i knew someone like yourself would get this and Breathe, for example, I think is one of the strongest songs on the entire record, you know, and, and Breathe is about that. It's about when all this chaos is happening in our lives, you know, and, and we look at the different faults. Are, are we bringing this on ourselves? Is this because of the decisions we made? Are you blaming others? Step back and breathe, you know what I mean? Just step back and, and look at it. Everything can be worked out. You know, if you take the time, you have the patience, and, and you step back and you take a breath, you can come up with a plan to make things better, you know? I've been through some horrible times in my life, man. All of us have. All of us. And everyone listening to this podcast, They've all been through terrible times. It happens to all of us. But how you step back from that terrible time, how you look at it is everything. That's your future. So the people who can step back and look at those terrible times and they can go, what can I learn from this? Those are the people who get better, okay? But the people who have a terrible time and they're like, that was terrible, I hate this and just want to move on from this shit and I never want to deal with this game, blah, blah, blah. And they just walk away and they learn nothing from it. Those are the people have a greater chance at repeating that same thing, okay? So learn from your mistake, learn from the terrible times. There's gold in that stuff, man. That's how we become better. That's how, how our state of being, so to speak, uh, becomes more positive for us down the road in our lives, you know? And, and that's kind of the message that, that I wanted to portray, you know? And, and uh, that's why I feel really strongly about the song Breathe. Is that, that's a song where it's just like, it's the middle of the record, you know? It's kind of the point where you take a breather from what's happened musically on the record on this journey and you just you step back you take a look at it you're like okay i've taken that breath and then bam you get your ass kicked by the rain <laughs> you know what i mean it just it comes in and it's an assault it's the heaviest song on the record you know and here's the thing too josh about this record every song none of it is negative there's there's always a positive twist to every one of those songs including the rain the rain you maybe read the lyrics and you go oh man that's not negative but it's just like that's a harsh harsh uh, song lyrically or whatever but what the message is is do what you love man don't succumb to what society says you have to be you know don't don't succumb to you know you got to go to school and then you got to work this job or become a doctor in order to be happy because then you make a shit load of money that's not what it's about man the, the message in the rain is everyone's different there's 
so many different ways you can make a living on this planet, but the best way to do it is by doing something, you know? And so there's always positive messages in, in these songs. And uh, that's what I is, is really happy about, that even with John, instinct lyrics is a positive message, you know, to fix yourself, you know, to, to look at the problems, recognize it, fix it. You know what I mean? That's what instinct's about, battle with oneself. So, yeah, man, uh, again, I, I could talk for hours about this stuff. And <laughs> even on a song-to-song basis, man, you know, I could get right down to what everything means. But uh, it's a journey musically. It's a journey lyrically. And uh, it's a fun ride. And even the artwork, man. If you look at the artwork of the record, the, the cover of the album, you notice there's a blue and a red tinge in colors. One of the, the eyes of a uh, character on the cover is red, one's blue. What's that represent? The negative and the positive side that every single person on this planet does. And it's that battle. That's what the state of being. So even the artwork was so well thought out and so well executed by Dane Hallett, our artist. You know, so it's the full package, man. You know, it's the full package. And I really hope that people can, can dig into it and uh, really enjoy it. Oh, man. Absolutely. And I think with that, that's an amazing note to end on. I mean, we, we've covered so much on here and, you know, obviously between us, I know, I know we could like uh, talk for hours about this, uh, if not days about this uh, album and everything that's going to be going forward and stories of the past and stuff like that. And it was great to be able to capture all of that with you again, uh, just being able to catch up on old times, being able to catch up here with, uh, with a monolith and the debut album state of being coming out March 27th uh, through your, your own label with a monolith music and everything that's going forward, including the, the UK and European tour, starting off the day of release. I mean, the fact that you get to do that the day the album comes out, it's just so cool. And everything going forward. And uh, Ryan, again, thank you for everything. Thank you for helping me jumpstart my career. And uh, thank you for everything going forward as well. Hey, Josh, again, a pleasure. I love doing this. I'm always available for you, brother. Uh, as a friend... And as a, a guy you can interview, you know, it's like, uh, I love what you do, love your podcast. Uh, wishing you nothing but the best. Uh, to all the people who follow Josh, continue to do that. To all the people that have heard this and you don't know a monolith, check it out. To all the people who are supporting us, thank you. Thank you endlessly because uh, we're starting out and, uh, you know, we can't, I know it sounds cliche, we can't do this without the support of all the people supporting it, just plain and simple. And, you know, for all the people who keep on writing us, why aren't you touring here? Why don't you do that? You know, if the support's there, we will be there. Um, you know, there, there are some places we wanted to hit where we actually have a ton of support in Europe and the UK, but unfortunately the routing didn't work out there. So people got to understand that, you know, we can't always get there, even the places that have the support, but that's why we're going to So thanks to everyone uh, who are supporting the monoliths. Hopefully uh, we get a bunch more people through this podcast. Uh, most of all, thank you, Josh, for your awesome support, brother. You know, we greatly appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you in your hometown very soon. Brother.